Yes, guys. So India's 37 gives us an insight about provisions, contingent assets, and contingent liabilities. Guys, when I talk about provisions, contingent assets, and contingent liabilities, one has to understand that there is a very thin line of difference between a liability and a provision, a provision and a contingent liability. Very thin line of difference. When I say outstanding salaries, do you call it as a provision for salary or outstanding salaries? Is it a liability or a provision? It's a liability. Now, why is it a liability and why not it can be called as provision for salary? Because both the cases I'll debit the P and L. What difference does it make? Does it make a hell lot of difference? Yes. So basically the terminology of provision and a liability has to be understood first of all. So whenever I say a liability, it is virtually certain. It is virtually certain. That amount is certain to be realized, uh, to be paid. That is called as uh, a liability. But when I talk about a provision, it is an obligation which has emerged, but the amount is only estimated. I don't know the exact amount of the liability, but I am estimating it. Then you create a provision for it. Whenever I talk about a liability or a provision, these are called as obligations. Any obligation which arises to an enterprise can arise due to three reasons. Three reasons why there is an obligation which emerges to an enterprise. First one, it's a legal obligation. An obligation created by law. Payment of bonus created by law. Payment of taxation is created by law. So these are legal obligations which are emerging out of a law. Next one, contractual obligation. An obligation arising due to a contract. I gave you a contract to complete the construction of a building but within 12 months. If you exceed beyond 12 months, then the construction company is supposed to pay a penalty of a certain price. These obligations arising to a construction company are not legal obligations, but they are contractual obligations. Third is called as conservative, uh, your constructive obligation. What is a constructive obligation? Constructive obligations normally emerge due to industry's best practices. For example, you go to a McDonald's showroom, okay, or McDonald's uh, uh, outlet, you ordered for a Coke, okay. He gave you in that big jar a Coke. While you're picking up the tray, the Coke fell down. You looked at him, he immediately filled one more Coke and he gave it to you. He can very well say, sir, I've already given you the Coke. It was your responsibility to take it to the table. When you spilled it, it is your obligation and it is not mine. So if you want one more Coke, you'll have to pay me again. Now, these kind of arguments are not done. That is industry's best practice because you want to keep your customers very happy. There is a problem regarding my mobile phone. I go to the showroom, I give the mobile phone. He'll immediately make sure that the service is done. Let's say my phone is not switching on. He'll do some here and there something. He'll switch it on and he'll say, sir, the mobile is still working. These kind of services after sale services are customary. They are industry's best practices or the practices which I have been following since my past. I have today got that credibility because of the kind of service which I create. So these are constructive obligations. Your obligation for dismantling an asset is also a constructive obligation. If I install a particular AC in my house and when I'm leaving the place, I'll have to remove the AC. So my installation of the AC has given rise to an obligation to dismantle the AC at a later point of time. These are called as constructive obligations. These are not obligations created by law. Neither these obligations are created by a contract. These are customary business practices or these are practices in the best interest of the customer. So these are past practices which I have been following. I am following even now, which is resulting in an obligation today. These are called as constructive obligations. So there are three types of obligations which can arise. Legal, contract, constructive. Legal obligation, contractual obligation, constructive obligation. Legal obligations, contractual obligations are also legal obligations is what he believed. So as per law or regulating statute when you create, constructive obligation is a commitment which I create or it is a customary business practice. These are obligations which emerge. Out of these obligations, let us understand provisions, contingent assets and contingent liabilities.
any obligation results in an outflow of enterprise resources enterprise resources in the form of any part being replaced or sometimes in the form of labor or sometimes in the time in the form of cash whenever there is an outflow of enterprise resources you need to measure what is the degree of certainty what is the certainty with which the obligation actually should be discharged or repaid if it is a present obligation or is it a possible obligation someone has filed a case against me defamation case of using his patent okay or patent infringement case so such patent infringement case which is filed upon me is a possible obligation because if he wins the case then possibly i'll have to pay a certain amount that is called as a possible obligation what is the present obligation i know i have to pay i know i have to pay so in the present obligation also sometimes an obligation might be virtually certain to happen what is virtually certain an employee has rendered the service during the month of march at the end of march i am assessing whether this obligation is a present obligation or not yes it is a present obligation how certain is it that you have to pay them on i have already utilized that fellow service so obviously it is virtually certain that i have to pay them out so it is such obligations which are present obligations which are certain virtually certain to occur then in such case i'll say it is virtually certain if the amount and the timing are determinable if i know what is the amount which i have to pay and at what time i have to pay then i can say that it is virtually certain for which i will recognize a liability so when i say it is a liability to us a liability is a present obligation which is virtually certain but let's say it is not virtually certain but it is probable to arise it is probable that i have to declare bonus it is probable that there is a particular amount of tax which i have to pay it is an obligation yes but is it certain no no it is probable my tax will be ascertained by my tax auditor at the time when the tax audit is due as on today's date i am measuring with reasonable certainty the amount which i am probable to pay towards tax in such cases i will recognize a provision as long as you can measure an estimate reliably if you cannot measure an estimate reliably then such amount instead of recognizing as a provision i will disclose it as a contingent liability let's say today there is an obligation but the obligation certainty to occur is remote i am not expecting it to occur there is a remote chance that it can occur then in such cases i will not disclose a provision or a liability in such cases i'll only disclose a contingent liability so if i ask you to define a liability how will you define a liability is a present obligation which results in a outflow of enterprise resources and such outflow of enterprise resources is virtually certain i know that this is the amount which i have to pay and at this point of time i have to pay it is virtually certain so i recognize a liability but what is a provision a provision is appearing in case where there is a present obligation which will probably result in an outflow of enterprise resources that what do you mean by probable more likely than not it is more likely that i will that i will have to pay the amount i will have to pay the amount which is more likely to occur if i can measure the amount which i am not supposed to pay reliably then i will recognize a provision but if i have to define a contingent liability i can recognize that contingent liability or i'll disclose a contingent liability in three situation number 1 where the obligation which results in outflow of enterprise resources is possible not probable it is possible number 2 the present there is a present obligation which results in an outflow of enterprise resources but this obligation to arise is very remote chances of occurrence in such cases i will recognize a contingent liability third one it's a present obligation which results in outflow of enterprise resources but i could not measure the amount with reasonable certainty a reliable estimate could not be made in such cases i will recognize a contingent liability 
So to understand contingency and contingent liability, we need to first concentrate on the concept of what is a contingency. A contingency is a situation which may result in a gain or may result in a loss. It is a situation which might result in a gain or might result in a loss. It depends on the outcome of an uncertain future event. And such uncertain future event is not within the control of the enterprise. I am saying it is a situation which results in a gain or a loss depending upon the outcome of an uncertain future event. Such uncertain future event is not within the control of the enterprise. Give me example here. Let's say there is a case of patent infringement which was filed by my competitor in my court. So in the court of law, it's just a case which is filed. If he wins the case, it will result in a loss. But the winning of his case is a future event which is uncertain. Depending upon the outcome of that uncertain future event, it might result in a loss to the enterprise. And the outcome of that future event is not in my control. It is within the judge's control or the court control. The court will decide whether, what is the outcome of the future event. In such cases, I will call it as a contingent loss. What is a contingent gain? Other way. I filed a patent infringement case. If I win the case, it results in a gain. So a gain which results from an outcome or the winning of an uncertain future event. And I cannot control that event. But unfortunately, it is within the control of the court or the judge sitting out there. Therefore, it might result in a contingent asset. So these are contingent assets and contingent liabilities. Clear? Remember guys, whenever I have a situation of a contingent liability, this is how I will have to look at it. A contingent liability is either a possible obligation or a present obligation. In case it is a present obligation where the future outflow is not probable or there is a remote chance of occurrence or the future outflow is probable but it cannot be measured reliably. This is my definition of contingent liability which I already discussed. In such case, if it is a contingent liability, then I should not recognize that contingent liability in my books of accounts. It is not a liability to be recognized, but instead it should be disclosed in footnotes. What is a footnote? How is it different from notes to accounts? Guys, footnote to balance sheet has much more greater emphasis than a notes to accounts. Notes to accounts run into pages and pages. People might read, might not read. But there will be a larger focus on my financial statements drafted in the form of balance sheets and PL. So, right below the balance sheet, when I present a contingent liability, this is the most prominent disclosure compared to my disclosure in my notes to accounts. Therefore, contingent liabilities should have a prominent disclosure as a footnote and should not be disclosed in my notes to accounts. Here, if it is a contingent asset, that means it results in a future gain resulting from an outcome of an uncertain future event. In such case, if it is virtually certain to occur, it is virtually certain that definitely there will be some gain. In such cases, I will recognize an asset. But if it is probable, and I am not saying that it is compulsory that it will come up, but there is a chance that I might get a gain because of an outcome of a future event. In such cases, my disclosure is not in the footnote. Contingent liability footnote. Contingent asset, not footnote. Notes to accounts, no. He says, report of board of directors. That means, even in my notes to accounts also, this cannot be disclosed. If I talk about prominence of disclosure, most prominent disclosure is footnote. Second, notes to accounts. Third is board of directors report. Very rarely do people read board of directors report and auditors report. Therefore, contingent asset being recognized or being disclosed in board of directors report gives it the least significance. It's a contingent asset, but it is not probable. I put a patent infringement case on someone else. It might result in a gain if the court rules it in my favor. But the chances of that result is very remote. 
therefore in such situation i should not recognize i should not disclose no requirement to disclose no requirement to recognize clear what is a provision it's a present obligation arising from past event it results in a future outflow of enterprise resources and such outflow can be reliably measured and reliable measurement requires the best estimate of the management so therefore the management should consider all risks and uncertainties in trying to give out the best estimate in measuring the amount of provision if the provision is payable within 12 months or it is live it will crystallize into a liability which is due within 12 months then no discounting is necessary but if the amount under the provision is payable beyond 12 months then i have to discount it then i'll have to discount and recognize the provision just like we have done in the case of provision for dismantling it was beyond 12 months so i've discounted it and i presented the provision in my financial statements clear now now that we are done with the concept of contingent liability contingent assets and provisions we come across a very interesting discussion called as executory contracts what are executory contracts let's say for example i enter into a contract to supply 100 units of a particular material a and in consideration for every unit he pays me 1000 rupees for 100 units the contract value is 100 into 1000 1 lakh i supplied 50 units he already paid me 50000 these contracts are executory because both the parties to the contract have performed equal obligation i did not supply one unit he did not pay me 1 rupee no party to the contract have performed any of their obligations in both these situations i'll call them as executory contracts the party or the customer has already paid me an advance of 10000 rupees not executory because the customer has already performed his part of obligation my part of obligation is still pending i supplied 20 units bill 20000 but the amount is not yet received i did my part of obligation he is supposed to do his part of obligation not executory so executory contracts only emerge when both the parties to the contract have not performed any of their obligations or both the parties to the contract have performed equal obligation now why do we talk about executory contracts because india s 37 excludes executory contracts unless they are onerous in nature india s 37 excludes executory contracts unless they are onerous in nature what do you mean by this onerous nature any contract is said to be onerous if it results in an expected future loss to the enterprise i'll tell you i have entered into a contract to supply 100 units of material x for 1000 rupees per item contract value 1 lakh the purchase price of each unit of material x after its production is 1500 rupees that means what executory i did not supply he did not pay but the contract as such will result in an expected loss to the enterprise because for me to produce material x it is costing me 1500 but i am eligible to collect only 1000 rupees from the customer such contracts are executory in nature but they are onerous in nature clear so where i am talking about onerous contract it is covered under india s 37 even though such contracts are executory in nature in any other sense executory contracts are excluded from the scope of india s 37 so india s 37 excludes executory contracts unless they are onerous in nature what is an onerous contract an onerous contract is where cost incurred to meet the contractual obligation exceeds the benefit arising from the contract the cost incurred to meet the obligation is 1500 per unit benefit i am expecting to collect from from the customer is only 1000 it results in a future loss so therefore if cost expected to meet the obligation is exceeding the benefit arising from the contract 
it results in an expected future loss such expected future losses should be recognized immediately applying your conservatism concept and such contracts are called as onerous contracts such contracts are called as onerous contracts clear And that will bring us to the discussion on India's 37 dealing with provisions, contingent assets and contingent liabilities.